Every single day in the community, men and women commit acts of mutiny saying, shh, don't tell, let's keep faking our unity. In this country, a woman is physically assaulted every 15 seconds. And that day, the investigators went to campus, pulled him out of class to tell him, you are stalking her, harassing her, leave her alone. It's scary for me when I go home to North New Jersey and I watch my brother say to his 15-year-old son, my nephew, when he asks my nephew in a grilling way, more grilling than how you doing in school, when you gonna get some? I still to this day experience sexual terrorism. Every time I enter a room, I'm always aware of the exit, where I am in, in conjunction with the exit, how fast I can get to that exit, um, how many men are in the room. Men direct sexual violence towards women daily, if not multiple times per day. If you don't do it, you have a friend who does it. Every single day in the community, men and women commit acts of mutiny. Shh, don't tell. Let's keep faking our unity. create a better gendered relationship between men and women. According to a recent study at Harvard University, one in 20 female students had reported being raped since the beginning of the 2005-2006 school year. At least one woman in three has been beaten, coerced into sex, or otherwise abused in her lifetime. Somewhere right now in this very space, a rape is occurring because we know that rapes occur every six minutes. Violence against women is not only violence against us, it's violence against men too. By forcing you to degrade us, it disintegrates we and creates a division, so now it's you and me. Or should I say you versus me? In order for us to feel equal, we have to overcome oppression by being superior, which is only a result of a group that is made to feel inferior. A woman is physically assaulted every 15 seconds. Now these struggles should sound familiar. It's the same strategy used in black versus white, wrong versus right, rich versus poor. It's the same thing that forces you to call me a whore and me to call you a dog. It ain't just the government, but these shackles of aggression that keep us down. Forces us to consume a space that society tells us is our only place, reducing us to thinking we're nothing more than niggas and bitches and minds through this mentality can play any race. Break up the family so it's no more supportive structure, no wholeness, no completion. A separation that forces us to look at each other, not as one, but as two. And you really think violence against women is only against us? Nah, it's violence against men too. Somewhere 
right at this very moment, a woman, a female college student, is being abused by her male partner. We know this for a fact because we know that every 15 seconds a woman is being victimized by some form of abuse. See, it's ironic that the black family suffers from this the most. And it's ironic that we once valued family the most. A fight for equality, a fight for rights, a fight to be respected by others, a human fight. A fight that we once fought together, but once we integrated schools, we were fooled into thinking everything was all together. Yeah, everything's all together, right? But it's our community that's flooded with drugs. It's our mothers who are forced to be fathers, and our youth that is tempted with guns. All because society tells you you don't have to solve a problem with communication as long as you got a slug. Nah, not in America, the home of the brave, the free of the slave. No, nah, this can't be, but it is. And I'm tired of being in prison. I want to be free. I want me and my king to be weak. We are stronger as us and weaker as you versus me. Power was always to the people, it was never to the person. One will never be greater than two. So understand it's time for a stand and a change of view. Because this violence against women is not only against us, but it's violence against men too. Carol J. Sheffield, a contributing author to women's studies texts, wrote a piece on sexual terrorism where she defines it as the common characteristic of rape, wife battery, incest, pornography, harassment, and all forms of sexual violence. She calls it sexual terrorism because it is a system by which males frighten and by frightening control and dominate females. Part of the language that we employ now is what if it was your mother or your sister or your, your cousin or your grandmother or your daughters. But I've gotten to the point that that's really bullshit. If we can't get folks in our community concerned about sexual violence amongst people who aren't within their family, that if we don't get to the point that we don't understand what this is doing to the social fabric of our communities. When I read the article about one of the columnists in Morehouse about the reason why if a rape happened, this is what black men have to do, All right? We have to respect women. We have to open doors for them. We have to pull out chairs. You know, his critique is we need to be more chivalrous to black women, right? As if chivalry hasn't been a box in itself that's oppressed black women. Placing black women up on pedestals. And if you don't do anything that fits into a male desire of something that deserves chivalrous activity, you fall slightly down the stripper pole, down to the bottom. So there's no two sides, right? Folks up on a pedestal and folks on the ground, right? If you do anything that questions your right to be on that pedestal, you slide all the way down. So this is the language that folks are using. And, and nowhere that critique is, how about I'm gonna pull aside the men who are in my circle, and more importantly, the men who ain't in my circle, and hold them accountable. There's no question every male who spends time around other males is well aware that men direct sexual violence towards women daily, if not multiple times per day. If you don't do it, you have a friend who does it. It's not easy for us to say to our friends, excuse me, can you please not call her a bitch in my presence? I know it's not easy for us to stand up to our brothers, especially, especially when they're longtime friends and cats that we really, really want to be cool with. And regardless if we admit it to ourselves or not, we care consciously or unconsciously, we care what they think about us. It's scary. It's scary to imagine that he's going to think I'm less of a man. It's scary to imagine if he's going to think I'm less of a man if I tell him I don't want to go to the strip club because of what that represents for my people.